Good morning, guys. Good morning. <laughs> I caught him slipping. Caught him slipping. He didn't know I was starting. I didn't say action, right, Benny? You never do. You never do. <laughs> Dude, show that can off right now. Here's a shout out to the customer if you guys have been following along where we did the kind of faux stone steps and wall just a few uh, few weeks back. This is a Red Bull koozie that they had custom made with our logo. So shout out to you guys if you're watching. Thank you so much. Aren't they meant, dude? Especially today, it's like 85 right now. Is it still cold? Oh yeah, it is. Sweet. It's still cold. Thank you guys very much. That was awesome. Day two of Stone Veneer. These are Northeast interlocking stone veneer panels with the color blend of New England. Today is Tuesday, the day after Memorial Day. We had a good weekend. And we're back to finish up the veneer. Welcome back to this project. All the people that have been keeping up with it. We're back here to finish up this stone veneer. If you're a new viewer and you want to see how we got to where we are, check out the playlist and the link in the description below. In the video just previous to this one, I go into a little more detail of, of the stone veneer panels and the mortar we're using and just how we go about it. And I actually wanted to uh, respond to a couple comments on the other one just in case they come up in this one. So you see me uh, putting the mortar on these panels here. I'm setting them up in strips almost with a couple um, parts on the, the tabs. And with this Ardex, with this special mortar, you actually don't need to back butter the entire piece. You can actually use less and that's what it's designed for. It's a microfiber enforced uh, mortar that's actually pretty expensive and it's designed so that you can use a little bit less of it and it still creates a better bond and holds tighter. So I try to do as little measuring as possible. I try to scribe as much as possible. And what I mean by scribe is I just try to use my square. And uh, we know that this window frame is pretty, pretty close enough to being square. And we're gonna give ourselves just a little bit of room off of that windowsill. And we're gonna mark it on the, the top. And now that we got that mark, we can um, make a mark down here at the bottom where this meets this one and those are our two joining points and this side's the waist Every time you make a cut, you want to wash it off because it has all that powder and dust. You won't get as good of a bond. And we're going to double check the cut. Looks good. And yeah, right here looks like a uh, right here looks like a big gap, but it's because of this sill is so rotted out. Yeah, we have to do a nice straight line and when they replace the sill it will come out and cover all of this and then you can put a bead of silicone caulking between the rocks and the new window sill. So this is me setting up the mortar on the back of one of these panels. It's a cut piece but it's pretty much the same thing. I'm going to put a little dab on the interlocking tab right there. Make sure that that has a good bond and I'm going to set up just three rows of equal and even strips of the mortar and what that's going to do is let me set the panel onto the wall at the correct depth some are thinner and some are thicker than others so these thick beads of mortar I guess you can say uh, give you some room for error and can allow you to stop the veneer at the correct depth to ensure a nice plumb face of the stone veneer and those gaps that are in between those strips where there's no contact, where there's no mortar, 
anything like that. In my opinion, if anything, it gives room for moisture to move behind the veneer. And also if there's moisture behind the veneer during the winter, it gives it space to freeze and expand into without necessarily popping the veneer off of the wall. And again, that's what this mortar is designed for. So you don't have to back butter the entire piece. It saves you material. Even though the material is more costly, you, have to, you can use less of it and it's stronger. So we trust this method of applying the mortar to an application like this, no problem. Uh, although when we do start talking about stone veneering, say the, the front of a house that goes up a full story or more, or if you're going something above your head, uh, some other steps of applying the stone veneer to whatever you're applying it to are necessary. Uh, a lot of times people will use a steel wire mesh that's attached to say the wall and that helps hold the mortar onto the wall and the stone veneer and then you also have people that scratch surface the wall meaning they apply a thin coat of mortar against the wall and give it a, a texture for the mortar behind the veneer to be applied to and he's getting us set up to be able to start rock facing some granite and here we are our left side is where it needs to be for at least three panels so what we ended up doing here just to give you guys a example is that this level is about a quarter inch higher or um, taller than the granite we're using is and what that's going to do for me is we have to have this granite because it's going to be for the sill of the, the house to keep water out from the back of the veneer so the back of the granite is going to be up higher than the front of the granite about that quarter of an inch so we used this level to uh, scribe the line we needed to cut so we gave ourselves about an eighth to a quarter inch gap from the top of the level to the bottom of the siding to give it some breathing room and that's where we made our line on all these pieces to trim them. When we do something like this, what we want to do is give ourselves some, uh, some wiggle room when making our measurement for our, our angle iron on the bottom. If you don't know what I'm talking about because you haven't seen the video before this one, make sure you check it out. I'll put a little card right here in the video. But uh, we started off with angle iron on the bottom of this veneer to hold it, hold our first course and then hold everything from there on out. And what we did was make a measurement that gave us some freedom to trim the top pieces and make sure that we weren't going to be short. Because if our measurement was short, we would have had to, a really big gap, but a really small sliver of a cut. So what you do is you give yourself the room that we did and then trim the top at whatever height you need it to be. So now that that's at that height, we got to make a sill. And a lot of times it's kind of hard to find the right depth of the sill that you need so you end up buying um, granite tread stock this is actually a step that you would use if building stairs but we're going to cut it down into strips that we need and rock face them what i mean by rock face is create a natural uh, textured face on the front of the granite because when you cut it smooth you have to actually rock face it and give it give it the natural texture or else it just looks like a smooth cut piece of granite and it's something that if you can learn how to do it's a, it's a valuable thing to know that you can do it on site and you don't have to special order anything and pay um, really expensive prices you can do it yourself so here's a little clip of me rock facing one of the pieces it's a it's a lot of custom work and it's a, it's not easy there's a lot of risk for damage uh, but it's something that if you can learn how to do on the job site and customize your own granite uh, sills and treads, it's a great thing to know how to do. So I'm going to make a separate video with a lot more detail about it. Uh, but for now, let's just get back into finishing up the stone veneer. All right, we've made some progress, guys. We are cut to there. We've dry fit a few more pieces. We got them marked. And now it's time to cut them. And then we'll uh, we'll get this whole thing adhered on.
is hot out, guys. It's very hot. About 85 degrees today. I hope you are all enjoying this video and this project so far. I just wanted to take a minute and again say thank you to everybody who's been watching. All the, the people that watch the videos every time I upload. I appreciate the support. It means a lot. And I also really appreciate all the feedback. All, all you guys that comment and reach out. Uh, talk to me about the projects that you're doing yourself. Uh, just asking questions and just just all around the, the community that kind of is going on in the comment section. I really appreciate that and I look forward to more of it. Like I had mentioned earlier in this video and also in a separate video about a couple months ago, I have a lot of projects that I've done this year and videotaped just really behind on the editing. So once again, thank you guys all for your support. I, I really appreciate it. I had no idea starting this YouTube channel in January that I'd be where I'm at now. Uh, almost 8,700 subscribers. I really appreciate it and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the videos and my goal is to make more videos and even better ones. We are done for the day. It was a good day. It was a hot day, huh Benny? Hot day. Hot day. But look at that veneer. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> uh, that whole dog side dog. is ready for cap. We got a few pieces to finish over on that side in the morning, but we didn't want to make a whole new batch of Ardex because that's where we just ran out. We'll be back tomorrow to finish the veneer and put our caps on. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Bye, Ben. And you'll see when that video comes out. Until then, God bless, peace.